So hello, Headhunting Housewives. It's your recruiter, Diane O'Brien. And today I'm having a special podcast that I'm so excited about. Of course, I'm IT challenged, so you can't maybe see my guest right now. <laughs> but um, I have Tristan Newman with me, one of my favorite people in the world, a recruiter extraordinaire. And uh, look, he's rolling his eyes as I'm saying this about him. <laughs> and uh, basically, he came on today because you heard about this podcast I was doing, and I was kind of new about it and nervous. And he has always built confidence in me. I don't know if he, knows, he even knows that about himself. Mm -hmm. um, so, Tristan, introduce yourself for a minute and tell the ladies what we want to talk about today. Okay. Um, hi, Diane. Thank you, first of all, so much for having me on this podcast. I feel it's such an honor. And um, currently, I work as a recruiter in the insurance vertical. I've been doing it for about just shy of two years now. Wow. Time really flies. <laughs> it does. And um, yeah, I, we're going to talk about women moving up. Is that what we're talking about today? Absolutely. No. And I love that that was your idea because I know when you and I were having wine last time we got together, cocktails, we were like, let's do the podcast together. And then before we did this, like I was thinking, what's our topic? And Usually my topics are pretty boring because I'm trying to teach women how to recruit, right? I'm trying to find right. women out there that want to be recruiters or up their game. There's so much hiring right now. So I'm teaching them the sourcing or the recruiting and just the hiring to get paid, right? right. Um, but I love when I asked you, like, you were like, no, let's not do any of those topics. Let's talk about women learning to, I think, almost build their confidence to go for the money they deserve and for the higher paying jobs they deserve, right? Right. So... How, where should we start? Like, I mean, I'm trying to think, I'm thinking of some of the people we actually hired together even when I was doing insurance, you know, back with you. And you know, like Grace. Grace, perfect example. Like, I can't remember. I remember her a little bit. Tell me about Grace. So, <laughs> what did, yeah. So Grace was your lady. Uh, she was wonderful. She worked at a consulting firm um, out in, I want to say like Hackensack, New Jersey. Yeah, was it, yeah, was it Boston? Or no, it was New Jersey, wasn't it? Because then she later got a job in we got her the job in Boston. Okay, that's yes. right. Yes, and she was just a superstar. She'd been working in her current firm for years. I mean, such a loyal, dedicated employee, but she wasn't really reaching her full potential. She wasn't earning the money that she was due, the amount of work she was doing. She didn't have the right title, and not that she was complacent, but she was comfortable. They, you know, made certain concessions, but there was just so much more that she had to offer. And I mean, that's one thing that you recognized in her when you initially reached out to her and engaged her. You were just like, you're the superstar, you know, woman. Why are you just settling for this? Yeah. That's how you got her. I mean, and that's when you got her out on the market. You got her a really, a really good job, Diane. Oh, uh, thank you. No, I think what we did, it was like, you know, it was like we were working with her. It took time. I mean, these hires, it takes a while for, I think, the women to get comfortable with even the idea of a new job, right? You, like you said, right. you get so complacent. And she wasn't looking when we called, right? I right. mean, passive candidates often. Um, so it is a slow dating process. But yeah, they have to first be open to it. And that's why I loved about her, that even though she was in insurance and in risk management even, right? So she definitely right. raised the options, that she could be open to like a new idea of even, you know, if it was like, let's say low ones, you know, but in the six figures getting into the high ones to then break the 200, hopefully with all the commissions and things that could come later. Right. I mean, but just the base increase, sometimes people don't think they can have it, much less a commission plan to go beyond their dreams, right? Right. Well, don't you think too, one of the things that I think works really well, I mean, look at you, like that was one of the things I thought about. If it had been me giving her a call, I don't think it would have gone the same way. I mean, in so many ways, I think she could relate to you because, you know, you're a woman who's really built like an empire for herself. Aww. And you're a woman that has really gone out and made a name for herself and you don't take no for an answer and you get what you want. And you're saying to her, look, you can do the same. You should do the same. You've got so much more to offer and we need to make sure that we get you there. And I think that was why she really enjoyed working with you and that was really what got her to start the search yeah no i appreciate you saying that it's funny sometimes you look back on hiring somebody you don't know what makes them make that turn right mm -hmm. um and you're good at that too so i would disagree it wasn't just me i've seen you do that with people also very <laughs> high levels and get them to even higher levels right and yeah. um and i think you know it's interesting she is a good example because 
don't know if I even shared this with you, but after we got her the job, and of course it took like a month to get the <laughs> offer through, <laughs> negotiating her offer, right? Yeah. <laughs> and um, I think it was like a month, it must have been the summer, because I think I was at the beach and she texted me, I'm not sure this is the job for me. Did uh, I ever tell you that? No, you didn't tell me that. <laughs> I can remember by email, you know, like, um, oh, but see, women get cold feet. It's like almost like in a relationship, right? Like you might be dating someone new or marriage or whatever, and there's always a cold feet moment. Sometimes it's before you take the job, which I think she got cold feet before taking the job too, if I recall. Um, and we had to push, but then even after, because, you know, I always tell women, and I tell this to the clients I too, that the first 30, 60, 90, when you get hired, you're still dating. I mean, right? right. It's, like, it's like people quit and leave. If they're there a year, you know, you really maybe have a good match, right? Right. But um, but no, so luckily I kind of just said, oh, I'm on vacation. Let's talk in a couple weeks is what I said to her. <laughs> 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 because, you know, if you just give people a little time to settle in. And then the next text I got from her, I think it was like on the night. I'm, I don't do sports. Was it Super Bowl? When was, there, when was J-Lo and Shakira? Shaking their butts. That was a Super Bowl. Yeah. Okay, that's when she texted me. <laughs> she must have been feeling women empowerment, and she was like, "Love the job, Diane. I just came back from Ireland and like some Europe trip for business, all paid for. I'm referring wow. you people. Like, isn't that crazy? That's amazing. Yeah. So I think that's back to like women empowerment and confidence. Like, yeah, it's gonna you're gonna have the confidence, but then you'll get shaky again, but then you'll build the confidence and then you'll get shaky again. <laughs> and just, you need someone to push you forward and support you. And hopefully the, the company now will be doing that for her, I'm sure. The more they invest in her, you know, and, and vice versa, you kind of get that comfort. But yeah. how can we get more women? You know, I feel like even at all levels, here she already was, Grace was already someone that was already making in the six figures, very established, good career woman. But I talk to college girls and guys, you know, yeah. that I'm like, I mean, we help some 30,000 people just get to 50,000 in our time together even, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, how do you even get like the young women, much less the women that are already in their career to say, okay, I can make 20 grand more than I'm making today? I think it's a change in attitude. And unfortunately, I think it it's part of a bigger issue where women are taught to settle. Yeah. Where, And I think that it's a really nasty thing that permeates throughout, especially in professional careers, where women say, oh, well, okay, well, it's fine, it's fine, and it's really not. And they say, well, no, like, it's, it's fine, you know, my partner will, will, will bridge the gap, or, you know, I should just be happy that I'm even getting the opportunity to work at this company. And that's definitely a conversation I've actually just had this week. Yeah. <laughs> yes, where, you know, I had a woman going up against a, a gentleman. She had more experience. She had better designations. Yep. And my client was like, well, you know, I think we could offer her 60. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but then for this gentleman who only had about three years experience in, in the industry, he's nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's nice. Yeah. He could do the job. And they're like, yeah, we would offer someone like him like 80. And I'm like, hold up, hold up. Like, no, no, no. And you know, she's like, well, yeah, 60, like, that's fine. Like I'll take it to get in there. And I'm like, mm -mm, mm. <laughs> I'm like, listen, they're willing to offer someone with less experience, more money to do this job. We're not saying yes until they come up. And she's like, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay, it's the opportunity, right? And I'm like, no, no, it's about what's right. I want to see you get, you know, you're, you're just, yeah, you're just you. Exactly. Like and she work. was, and she was like, you know what, Tristan, you're right. Why, why would I not? Why would I settle for twenty thousand dollars less just to just to do it when they would offer, you know, some young guy, yep, more, way more to do the same job? And I'm like, no, and you know what? She went in and she asked for her due and we think, I think it's going to work out. Oh my God. But I do. And That's it was, great. Cool. don't settle. You don't have to do that. You yep. are worth it. And you need to know that you're worth it. You're as good as any man. Oh my God. For sure. Better. 
<laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh my God. That's so great. I love that. And I feel like a lot of times recruiters, like it needed you to speak that confidence into her and recruiters were in such a cool position, right? Because we are that middleman. So we hold the job and the offer and we can help negotiate that where if, if you weren't in the, the middleman connecting the two pieces, the client and your candidates, Right. Then they probably just would have offered her 60, she would have took it, no one would have been the wiser, and then right. women stay at a lower level. Right. So, yeah, that's very cool. I wish more recruiters would do that. And I think it is nice, I guess, in some ways that we are, you know, paid often a percentage of their salary because it does help incent us to try to get them the most. So yeah. that is nice, but I feel like, um, you know, a lot of recruiters just want to get a lot of the jobs filled. They don't want to rock the boat. They better have the, the placement than maybe lose the whole sale, which is right. a little more selfish of thinking about yourself and the other person. So I love that you thought about her. Could have risked, could have risked the placement, right? Right. But you know what, though? It does a disservice, yep. I, think, I think, to everyone ultimately, because here's the thing. I don't think that that, that gentleman was a better fit for the job than she yep. was. And, you know she's a, a young woman really coming into her own and why should she not make the money to, to support herself? Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, so, absolutely. So it worked out, it's going to work out for the client. They're going to get the best person for that job and it's going to work out for her because she's going to make the money she, she needs to, to really plant roots and establish herself. Yep, exactly. Yeah, sometimes I think about it where, because obviously when we have the clients, you know, there are clients sometimes too, plus we have the candidates. So you want to serve both, right? So I right. think, you know, a lot of my clients are friends. So obviously I want to get them a good value with the candidate, but right. I always go on the side with the candidate because I must view it like Main Street versus Wall Street. Like the companies, <laughs> even my friends or my clients, they're more Wall Street. They have the big bucks. They're the capital right. partners. They're the CEOs already. If they give me a range, like you're saying 60 to 80, and yeah. I have a great gal that I know is worth 80, yeah. I'm going on the main street side, right? <laughs> <laughs> so no, I love that. I love that. So what else? I think in building confidence, it's funny. I have to mention fashion <laughs> with you on yeah. the call today and dressing for success because Absolutely. remember you and I did our first little trial podcast, right? Back yes. when we were doing insurance together and hiring yes. uh, there at Jonas. And, um, and I think one of the things we did mention was, you know, when they go into the interview, obviously it's so important that how you not only are speaking about what you're worth, but show up like you, you know, own it and you're worth it. Right. So oh. since you're my fashion guru and I can't see your, I only see a headshot today. So tomorrow if we do this again, we'll have to get a full body shot. <laughs> okay. so I, always, I miss seeing what you wore in the office every day. Yeah. But, um, but tell me about like, what do you think when women go in for an interview, let's talk about confidence and around fashion, that kind of thing. I do. So the one, the one thing too, which is so funny, it's come up a lot in the office and I, I hope this doesn't sound disparaging because this is not how we mean it. But when we have our, our ladies go into interview, the one thing that I always stress to them is that make sure that they're meeting you and they're focusing on you. Yep. We don't want any other distractions to get in the way. And unfortunately, with how people are, they judge <laughs> and they, they focus on things that really don't matter. Mm -hmm. So I do recommend, you know, simple makeup, simple hair, you know, you can be stylish, but don't be flashy. Yep. You want to make sure that they're focused on you and what you're bringing and what you're saying. And we don't want them to think, oh, you know, is she like going out after this? <laughs> right, is this date night? <laughs> or, like, or they're focusing on your makeup. I've had that happen before where a client has called me and said, you know, she was great, but I just couldn't, I was just staring at like, at her contour. And yeah. I'm like, <laughs> what? Like, why are you, why are you focused on that? Right, so, right. You definitely want to dress to impress. I mean, a nice dress, a nice pair of pants, a good jacket, but yeah, Less is more, and that goes for our gentlemen too, but less is more. You want them to focus on you because there's a lot of good things that I know that you're going to be saying. There's a lot of good things you're bringing, and we just want to make sure that that message is conveyed. There are no distractions. Yep. How about you? What, do you, what would you suggest? Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. I think that 
Yes, through time since I've been hiring sales girls up to then the level C player, like CEO women. Mm -hmm. um, usually when they get at, at that level, they've already learned that. I find it's right. the younger women that haven't learned that yet. So they got right. the cleavage out sometimes. They're wearing the okay. open toed shoes, the short skirts, thinking gotcha. it's going to help them get the job. And I get it. We live in a society that says sex sells and you see it all over TV. But if you want to be taken seriously and going for a corporate job, go in know your audience. It's a corporate interview, right? I mean, especially Correct. for you, you're in insurance. I mean, that's a pretty serious industry. <laughs> yeah, the people are still pretty, it's still pretty boring. Yeah. They're, they're not spicing it up quite yet. We're, we're yeah. getting there, but it's taken some time. Yeah, I think so. I think there might be like, I'm doing some finance too, and finance is a little boring, I think as well, you know, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, definitely in those industries. So it'd be different if we were hiring like in fashion, for instance, and a buyer, that's of different, right? Of course. So you it's wanna... like, yeah, what, what's the job you're going for? Right. You definitely want to convey, yeah, in that industry, you want to convey your style. Absolutely. And, and who you would be targeting, but in insurance, in finance, in technology, mm -hmm. less is more, simple is best. Yep, exactly. And then, you know, the other thing I wonder about, like when they're on the interviews, we talked about kind of first knowing they're worth it to take the interview, then going in and presenting themselves well. And of course, you know, the first impression is of course always looks, but then it's about how you're speaking about yourself and what you've done. The other thing I think women don't do is they don't always speak. They don't like to brag, you know, right. men will tell everything they're great at. They have numbers to back it up. And I'm, I'm guilty of this myself. I don't think I, my resume, I haven't updated or my client, my current clients probably don't really know what I've done in the past. I don't go back and say, oh, I played <laughs> this many people last year. I've done this. It's like, luckily they referred to me. So they probably know I'm pretty good. And, and right. that's like, but women should go in if they're looking for jobs. How can we help them? Like they need a pep talk before, right? Like they need a pep talk. So I have to tell you something. And this actually came from my mom and yeah. I was so shocked but I think, I think she's right. And again, I think it's conditioning. So we were talking about some issue I was having and my mom, and I told my mom, you know, the course of action I was going to take in order to resolve that. And she said, Tristan, you know, that's really interesting that you say that. She said, this is why men are able to get ahead because men are not afraid to ask for what they want. And yep. she said, women don't do it. And I'm like, well, why not? And she said, because we're told not to ask and just be grateful. It goes right back to that. It's so growing. yes, there is a fine line, but like you want to talk about your achievements, talk about your accomplishments. You should be proud. You're selling yourself. And that's what you're bringing to the table. If you did, you know, 15 placements in 120 days, you should brag about that. If that's a, if that's a good, that's good volume, especially if it's at the C-suite level. That's awesome. I want to know. Because I want to bring you on my team. Right, right, exactly. And, and men are more, I think, that metric driven and focused. So we have to, as women, make sure we are even looking back what we've done to quantify that, to put that as a bullet on the resume. Because, right, and exactly. numbers speak. Exactly, numbers speak. You should never be afraid that your success would be perceived as braggadocious. Your success is your success and it should be celebrated. And we definitely have to get them comfortable with, with being able to, t to speak to that. Yeah. Because that's amazing. Whenever I, I hear, you know, oh, well, you know, I retained 100% of my business in 2019. I'm like, that's amazing. I'm like, did you say that in the, in the interview? Well, well, no. And I'm like, <laughs> why not? Like, that's <laughs> fantastic. Yep. And that's, a, that's an asset to the client. Like, talk about it. Don't be afraid. Men are doing it. Yep. And I'm sure that you're doing even better. So talk about it. Don't be afraid. Definitely talk yourself up. Right. Exactly. I think they need that little pep talk and know it's okay. And like, and often if they write it down too, sometimes you can forget those numbers. At least I know I'm bad with numbers. So I have to almost <laughs> write it. And that way, you know, it's written down. So when I go to speak to it, it's in my head visually in a way. So I can say I did this you know, help grow that company from, you know, 8 million to 18 million, I hired a hundred reps that year and whatever the little metric numbers are, you want to be able to speak to that. So, you know, that's a really good one. There was something else I want to bring up around that, that as we were speaking, it totally slipped my mind now. So I'm to, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, there's another good point on that, that it'll come back to me. Okay. But um, what was I going to say? Yeah, it's funny that when you talk about the whole confidence thing, though, and how men have always just been groomed to do that, and women are used to being grateful. I swear, my girlfriend and I were talking 
um, this week on one of our dog walks, and we were joking that we think it goes back to the Bible and Adam and Eve and how Eve is blamed for the apple and it follow does. the leader, your husband, Adam, or you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. And it just, that doesn't hold up in the modern world, nor do, I, I don't want that to hold up because yep. I, I really am a big proponent of get the best person in the job. And a lot of times those people are women and they're not yep. being recognized and they're not being acknowledged. And I think it's just such a disservice mm -hmm. to, to hold them down or to hold them back. I mean, even I was talking to Sarah and there's a woman she's working with. And the reason why she's starting to look mm -hmm. is because she has, has seen now that there are no women in the exec, mm -hmm. at an executive level in her firm. Wow. And that's her goal is to be an executive. And I was like, it's a, it's a, it's an upstanding firm with a good reputation, but now that I'm looking at it, she's right. There's yeah. no women. And I'm like, is that on, per like, is that by accident? I can't believe that, that right. that would be the case. No. So, so yeah, it just, it, yeah. it's disturbing. I don't, I don't like that. I think it, it gender, it shouldn't be about that. Like yep. women are amazing. They see things in a different perspective. They have different experiences. Why wouldn't you want that experience, you know, on your side and at that level? Exactly. No, I think the same thing. I think it kind of goes back. It's a deep seated thing in our society and many cultures, not just here, right? In mm -hmm. America, we're probably pretty advanced in comparison right. to right. the rest of the world, but still here. It's like, and even like, not just career. I think it goes, you know, I think about my marriage and I still kind of almost make my husband the leader, you know, you know, mm -hmm. he listens to me and we partner, but there's always that something like, I was just, it was a society we came up in, right? right. Like I'll default to him if we really butt heads where, right. why? like, <laughs> why, right? Why, why is it either more equal or the other way around? Because women are taught to compromise and men are not. Men are taught right. to lead and women are supposed to follow. And yep. again, I, I just don't think that it needs to be that way in 2020. I don't yeah. think it, I it just doesn't need to be that way. It's archaic. It works. In some instances, and I'm not saying it, it's completely bad, right. but I, I would like to see more women taking the lead. Yeah, 100%. If not at home, at least the business is where you can do it. So right, right. <laughs> you're just, like, I love career because I can like, you know, <laughs> yeah, you can you're, expand. You're calling your own shots. You're, you know, you're doing your own thing and you're doing it well. I mean, so many people are referred to you because they know that you're the woman that can do the job. Not even that, you're the person that can do the job. Oh, thank you, dear. Thank you. But no, I think more women, if they felt that too, and they know that they are the person that haven't seen it or being home. I think the other thing too, if they were out of the market because of having kids, women are the one always to stay home with the kids, which makes sense. I want to be home too. That's why I've always kind of worked from home to be mm -hmm. around the kids you know, being raised, but it shouldn't be, it's almost like women have to apologize for that when they go into the interview, if there's a gap on their resume yes. where we should just come out loud and proud. Like, Hey, I took off. I stepped down from these big positions to be yeah. home. It, they have to like own it when they're talking about it, not shying away from it. Right. They do. Yes. No. And I've had clients be like, well, mm, you know, why didn't she work for five years? And I'm yep. like, do you know how expensive daycare is right? <laughs> for, for one child, let alone yep. two or three? It was made more sense for her to stay home. And honestly, we should not criticize her for doing that. That's right. You know what kind of experience you get from having to stay home with kids all day? <laughs> oh my God. Nothing must make you go back to work more. <laughs> right. That's a full-time job, but and your hours are longer than nine to five. Like, you need to be open-minded because they're bringing something to the table that people who don't have children yep. or men never will be able to. Yep. No, and exactly. Yeah, don't apologize. Embrace it. I think it's a phenomenal decision. And I respect women that step back from their careers to raise their kids. They should be celebrated and promoted. Yes. Oh, thank you. I know. I love that. I appreciate that too. People, recruiters are always taught to look at those gaps and we don't like gaps in the resume. Well, we like a gap if they're home taking care of their kids, if they're taking care of a sick loved one, because they're the one that's there, their mom, their dad, like 
right, that should be celebrated. I don't think it's a negative. But that's the old, archaic way, more masculine way of looking at it. I think as Absolutely. women, we celebrate that. Absolutely. I've always made an argument and I've always gone to bat for women who have taken a step back to raise their kids or to, to take care of anyone. Yep. And I'm like, you need to have a conversation with this woman. This was, was a good decision that she made. She can pick it back up in a couple of months and it'll be like, it's That's like right. riding a bike. Make sure you don't discriminate. That's terrible to do. You're missing out on great people. Yep, exactly, exactly. And that kind of brings me to the last point I think we can talk about where just um, the flexibility that companies can offer now for women. I think women love work from home. You know, I've always been a big proponent of work from home. Yes, you have. <laughs> um, I that. And not all women even want that. Some that have been stuck with the kids for 20 years, they would love to go into <laughs> corporate America. <laughs> But I feel I'm more of a proponent of giving women what they want. If they want to be in the office, great. If they want to be home, great, 50-50. But are you seeing anything different and changing now in 2020 to offer more flexibility to women that are balancing kids and family and now, you know, want to be in the work world? Not yet. I mean, no, okay, that's not fair. Yes, yes and no. So work from home is still hard to get. You know, it's still pretty challenging. I mean, people are opening their minds to the conversation, but yes, we are more so now seeing clients give people flex hours so that they don't have to leave their children in daycare longer. You know, they're allowing them to, you know, leave early, finish the day out at home, Mm -hmm. you know, with their kids. So slowly but surely, but not quite yet to the flexibility that I think that they would need. But we're working on it and we continue to advocate because again, this is life. It's not neat. It doesn't fit neatly into a box. People have circumstances and they can still do the work, but they need you to work with them. Yep. It's so true. true. And it's it's funny. Insurance, I do think is slow to the game. Although we did hire, I think a couple, one of the first hires, there was a woman in New York and New York City of all places, I think I recall them actually asking if she could be remote and work from home because office space was limited and they were growing yes, so fast. So that was cool. <laughs> that's correct. Yeah. And that was that was nice. I mean, it was shocking to see, but I think we all appreciated that because they're making it work. Yep, exactly. And I think as companies find out more as people are able to live that kind of laptop lifestyle, so to speak, that everyone's kind of after, you know, especially later in their career, right? Like they've already paid the dues. You have to be around for training. I mean, any new job, you know, three to six months from your training, you probably have to be there to ramp up and learn it. But if you start producing, if you want to reward those producers, right? Companies are recognized as probably more outside of insurance now, even finance or IT and clean tech um, and recruiting. I love that recruiting companies are giving recruiters a lot more work from home time. And I'm not hundred percent. I've always almost always been hundred percent home. And then when you're producing, you can also, I think we need to learn when they are a producer, then push, push that ceiling for everybody, right? Because if you can produce, it's the women that are producing and are already doing well that know how great it is, that they can push it for everybody beneath that don't even know how wonderful it is on the other side, right? Yeah. I mean, I can, I think I can speak from a personal experience. My mom has been at her company for 27 years. Wow. Yeah, I know. Can you believe it? That's awesome. Um, and it took her, I want to say maybe 20 okay. to get the work from home flexibility. But now that she's able to work remote three days a week, she gets so much more done. <laughs> Which, Hallelujah. <laughs> right? Which yeah. is, your people are like, no, 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 she's going to be distracted. And I'm like, no, she actually gets so much done. She's in a quiet space. She's in a comfortable space. She doesn't have to get dressed to come out the house or like commute. So she's putting in longer hours and yeah, there's yeah. nobody distracting her. If she's trying to run a macro and she needs to focus on, on the calculations, she doesn't worry about, you know, John next door and the phone ringing or somebody constantly ringing her line, she can tune it all out, get her things done and respond to people as necessary. I mean, she worked till eight o'clock the other day. Yep. Yeah. It's so true. I don't think companies realize that enough to how much more productive you are because people can then also work around their own energy times, not like a nine to five or lunch is at exactly. 12 to one. Like I'm an early riser. I'm up at five 30 and I want to get to work. I don't want right. to stop. 
right. at like seven to go, look pretty to go to an office and then commute an hour and then <laughs> chit chat all day. And then I come home like I got nothing done. Right. And right. Then, so I think when people realize when, you know, yeah, ramp them up, but then once they're doing what they're doing, give them right. options. The more freedom, the more loyalty it creates. Exactly, Diane. Exactly. Exactly. You're so right about that. And companies don't, they don't trust their people. And yep. again, it's a process, but I think the more flexibility they give, the the more loyal women will be and yep. the better they will perform because you're working with their lives and you're saying, hey, listen, I know that you're a person. I know that you have things. Let's make your life a little bit easier so you can work a little bit better. Yep. No, it's so true. It goes a long way. Oh, yeah. Especially